the different, you know, everyone has a turn and a follow through kind of, but it's really these couple feet which are completely indiscernible to the human eye, which is where you see the biggest difference between pros and, or just different level of players. But to me, a heavy ball is a ball that doesn't only have the rotation, but it also has compression. You know, and today we'll talk a little bit about that, about how, you know, exactly what happens between the strings and the balls to create both compression and rotation. And it's subtle. It's very subtle. You know, one degree with the racket face, if you're hitting hard, is like 10 feet in length. But you can see, this, even this racket, this angle, again, this is going to seem so subtle. But this angle versus this angle leading into the ball is what it's all about. It's all about getting that that little bit more, using a little bit more compression and grabbing to pull the ball up rather than the racket face. So you're gonna have to make a move on this. See how this bottom edge of the racket is leading into the ball versus the top edge? Now what happens is, again, the brain's sophisticated. So your brain starts slamming on the brakes in the shoulder. It starts slowing the swing down. Then it starts calculating your roll to get the racket face right. And then you end up here and you get tight and you just can't so truly swing out. So I won't get it, but here's, what, here's the drill you guys are gonna do. Here's what you gotta try to do, okay? You have to do this within, within the context of your existing forehand. I want you to do your exact same forehand that you're doing now. But I want you to intentionally, with your same swing, I want you to intentionally ground the ball. You're just gonna keep your racket so closed within the, don't, don't just go like this. Do it within the context of your same stroke. You're gonna intentionally keep your racket so closed, it's gonna go straight into the ground. Let it fly, there you go. There you go, use your swing, use your existing swing. All we're trying to do is exaggerate the racket face so much that we don't care if it goes out or goes over the net. We don't want it to go over the net. So I'll do this drill in matches to get my forehand going on purpose. I'll just do some Rafa, Rafa Nadal forehands. Now, I did do this drill with a young lady the other day, and as happens about 2% of the time, she did come straight into her face. So what you're gonna do, nice and easy, just drop hit some forehands and see if you can make your racket come up behind your head. You're really gonna exaggerate that upward motion. Go ahead, grab some balls and see if you could do Rafael Nadal reverse forehands up behind your head. I mean, they're doing that more than they're hitting over across their body. Now, not, now this is just a drill. It's not actually how we want you to hit, but I'll tell you what, watch guys. I'll tell you what, this, this, sorry. Sorry, this is really close to this. All you're doing is you're going behind your head instead of over your left shoulder. So it's just forcing you to do the swing that you almost should be doing anyway. Those are a couple of drills you, that can help you with it. But honestly, it's such a subtle thing we're working on right now, I don't have a ton of stuff. You gotta, you gotta do a couple key things. You gotta, actually one key thing. You have to exaggerate. You have to exaggerate this correction Maybe it does a couple things, because you also have to not be outcome oriented. You have to be okay with missing a few in the ground, and you have to try to exaggerate this portion of the swing, leaving the racket closed. Yeah. Yeah, remember, it's, it goes like a Ferris wheel. And if you ever feel like you're losing it, even right now, you can hit a couple where you come back up behind your head, just to get that feeling again. So the irony of this is that we're working on a technical thing that's gonna make you miss in the net. But the beauty of it is what you're gonna be able to do now is you're gonna be able to hit the absolute crap out of that ball six feet over the net and it's gonna drop in safely into the court every time. So that's the beauty of it. You do wanna go high and deep, but not floaty, spinny, high and deep. You really wanna be able to hit a heavy, high and deep ball. So keep that in mind as we're doing this. It's okay to miss in the ground, but find the things that are gonna make you change your target to make it higher, you know? Your brain has to readapt to the spin you're getting now and this, this rotation because you're used to using probably gravity, which is hitting soft, or proximity hitting low. With this new variable where you're going to get this compression rotation, it, your brain has to recalculate its target. So you're going to be aiming a lot higher over the net. Now, I got to be careful saying that because we, we don't want you guys going back to this. Right. But while you're practicing this, just remember, you know, still try to keep the racket face closed, but... 
Good, don't let the ball drop low. Hit it when it's high. Get your racket low. Good, can you leave that hit? Aim into the top of the ball. Aim in, target the top of the ball. You know what I'm saying? Target this part of the ball. Not, it's not what will actually happen, but if you try to do that, it forces you to keep the racket closed. Your racket's not actually like this at contact, but you can get that feeling. You can get that feeling. That's, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to work on people with. One, because I encourage you to miss it first because you got to fix that racket face. But two, I mean, we're, we're saying, you know, swing up at 20 degrees leading at the top edge versus, you know, 10 degrees with the slightly the bottom of the racket. It's so hard, it's such a subtle, hard thing to work on that all you can do is exaggerate, experiment, know what's really happening and those, those couple drills I showed you. But really, it's, it's you guys that are going to have to kind of figure it out in the end. But, but it, we just have to know the underlying problem is our brain's desire to want to elevate the ball with the angle of the racket face. And I'll tell you this, you guys are very advanced players, so it's, this doesn't relate to you, but we want to understand it. I have never once in 25 years of teaching tennis given a lesson to a beginner player. I shouldn't say never once, maybe once or twice. But I've never not had them turn their racket up to hit the ball over the net. Right. It just makes sense. And then so if right from the get-go, if you don't really learn this, this is why even with little kids you'll see me goofing off with topspin with them. Um, you will always have a little bit of this in your brain, this desire to want to hit the bottom of the ball versus using versus trusting that. So if I keep my racket down, the ball's going to go up. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense, you know. If you want to hit heavier, more consistent ground strokes, be sure to check out the Beep Coach. This revolutionary new training aid trains the most important aspect of the forehand and backhand ground stroke: the racket face just before, during, and just after contact. Be sure to check out the How to Beep page to learn all the fundamentals involved with an effective forehand and backhand. Check out beepcoach.com now.